Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless first john 2 18 little children it is the last hour and as you have heard that the antichrist is coming even now many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour there is a coming world dictator known as the antichrist who is foretold of in the bible who in the near future will control a worldwide government a worldwide monetary system and a worldwide religion. He will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world. Is he living now? Probably. Is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Fewer rights and fewer choices about how we live our lives freedom in America is shrinking. And according to one expert, the Constitution has been effectively terminated. The FBI is spying on Americans and the IRS has 4,500 guns and 5 million rounds of ammunition at its disposal. Dale Hurd brings us the details in this eye-opening report. When the Iron Curtain fell in 1989, there was a wave of optimism and excitement that freedom had been unleashed and there would be no going back to totalitarianism. But along the way, something went wrong. Global studies show that for most of the world, freedom has been in decline for many years. Add to that an economy consolidating under larger companies, with consumers seeing their purchasing choices restricted. There was once a sense that freedom was winning and expanding across the globe. Now the future is looking less free with fewer rights and fewer choices about how we live our lives. Christian civil liberties attorney John Whitehead takes the radical view that the Constitution has been effectively terminated because so much of it is now regularly ignored. He says the many heavily armed government agencies and local police forces constitute a standing army on U.S. soil, ready to raid homes in violation of the Fourth Amendment which protects our right to be secure in our persons and property. The IRS has 4,500 guns, 5 million rounds of ammunition. The Veterans Administration has 11 million rounds of ammo. The Department of Health and Human Services, believe it or not, has 4 million rounds of ammo. The Social Security Administration has 800,000 rounds of ammo for their special agents and armors and guns. Even NASA has a SWAT team. Since 1980, SWAT raids have risen from 3,000 a year to 80,000. Why do our police have to have grenade launchers and MRAPs with your tanks on tires in communities of 5,000 people? The Fourth Amendment's dead. And the First Amendment, which was intended to protect speech the majority doesn't like, no longer prevents people from being censored, canceled, deplatformed, or even debanked. A Qualtrics study found that most Americans under the age of 30 favor censorship if free speech hurts someone's feelings. Freedom of religion, freedom of association, all the First Amendment freedoms, they are overwhelmingly intolerant of these freedoms. They do not want to support free speech, freedom of religion, or anything like that if the exercise of those freedoms stands to hurt a vulnerable minority. And the FBI continues to illegally spy on Americans, including politicians, another violation of the Fourth Amendment. Not only is liberty under siege, our economic choices are narrowing. The dark green color in these graphs shows the growing dominance of large corporations over small businesses in many sectors of the economy. Small business optimism is now at its lowest point in 10 years. 
nearly two in five small businesses could not pay their rent in May. Consumers are having choices taken away from them, especially if the product they want runs on fossil fuel, mainly because of those in power supporting the belief in a man-made climate emergency. Energy analyst Dr. Marlo Lewis accuses Washington of trying to regulate the fossil fuel industry out of the economy. This has put a big damper on capital investment in, in oil companies, natural gas companies. Uh, it's also made it very difficult for a coal company in particular, but even for a natural gas company to get a, sub a substantial loan from the banks. Driving energy costs up and the reliability of the nation's power grid down. A Penn State poll showed most Americans believe they've lost more personal freedoms in the past 10 years than they have gained. While another survey found that one third of Americans think having a strong leader who doesn't have to bother with Congress or elections would be a good system of government. One of the forces behind the fall of the Iron Curtain and a leader of the Czech Velvet Revolution, Yaroslav Flieder, told us he never expected the free world to turn out like this and said he's especially upset that many Americans seem okay with a loss of rights when it's used against their political enemies. People whose rights are being you know, removed, they really do not perceive it that way. They sometimes actually think, almost see it like as a benefit, you know, as a beneficial process because sometimes these rights are taken from people they don't like and they applaud it. And I've, in this situation, situations like that, I always tell them, you know, yeah, it might be actually pleasing now. Just wait until you are the object of this process. When your rights are violated and when, when it's going to be done to you, you won't find it as much you know, fun as you know, you're finding it now. The average American that has basically given up their rights, I mean, they're violated every way across. And unfortunately, because we don't exercise them, we're losing them. Another survey found that one third of Americans think having a strong leader who doesn't have to bother with Congress or elections would be a good system of government. Wow, did you hear that? One third of Americans believe a strong leader who doesn't have to bother with Congress or elections would be a good system of government. America is ripe for the unveiling of the Antichrist. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist, they're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Well, China is accusing the United States of turning Taiwan into a, quote, powder keg and ammunition depot after the Biden administration announced a $345 million military aid package for the island nation. China's Taiwan Affairs Office saying Saturday, quote, no matter how many U.S. weapons, it will not shake our resolve to solve the Taiwan problem 
or shake our firm will to realize the reunification of our motherland. Joining me now, Gatestone Institute senior fellow and author of The Coming Collapse of China and the great U.S.-China tech war, Gordon Chang. Does this, in your mind, this latest statement from this Chinese this Chinese uh, board official office, whatever it is, does this, in your mind, say that the, the Chinese are actually writing plans when it comes to Taiwan? That we know. I mean, China is planning to go to war. Xi Jinping doesn't stop talking about going to war. He visits the Eastern Theater Command, which is the command that would attack Taiwan. And we know that they're mobilizing not only the military, but also civilians. Clearly, China is getting ready to do so. And it's not just Taiwan. Uh, right now, they're messing around in the South China Sea with the Philippines. There's always Japan, South Korea. Um, there are so many different targets for China right now. The Biden administration reportedly is searching for possible Chinese malware targeting U.S. global military operations. It's being called a ticking time bomb. The New York Times reports the Biden administration believes Chinese hackers have installed malware on U.S. networks that could affect both military and civilian operations. Officials say the malicious code could disrupt power grids, communication systems, and water supplies that feed military bases around the world. But the impact could spread much farther, as that infrastructure often supplies civilian homes and businesses. A National Security Council official did not acknowledge the malware directly, but said the Biden administration is working relentlessly to defend the United States from any disruptions to our critical infrastructure. Back in May, Microsoft reported finding mysterious computer code in telecommunication systems in Guam, the Pacific Island home to multiple U.S. military bases. Now, you U.S. officials acknowledge Microsoft could only see a small portion of a much larger issue. They say the Chinese malware effort predates the May report from Microsoft by at least a year. What are we seeing today? You know, the threat environment at its all-time highest. Just over the last year, we saw an increase of 953 new bad actor groups, bringing the total of 3,500 unique groups. And earlier this month, Chinese hackers infiltrated the accounts of the U.S. Commerce Secretary and other officials at the Commerce and State Department. The Chinese are really good hackers. Um, they have penetrated everything, and we should assume that they've penetrated everything. Reports say that the Biden administration is trying to figure out whether this malware and other similar attacks are directed only at the military or all of civilian society. Well, of course, it's all networks in the United States. And for the Biden administration to ask that shows you how out of touch they are with China. And that's also true with the senior leadership in the Pentagon. Here we have a China that is obviously getting itself ready to go into battle. And we have a Pentagon and an American political leadership that has really very little sense of urgency. We're at grave risk at this moment. Now overseas, a drone attack in Moscow overnight, the fourth in that region in just over a week, with Russia saying it came from Ukraine. Four in just over a week, but for a second time in two days, the same skyscraper in Moscow that houses government offices was again hit by a mystery drone. As you say, Russia saying it came from Ukraine. Ukraine not confirming, but an advisor to President Zelensky's office saying this, Moscow is rapidly getting used to a fully-fledged war, a warning that there's going to be more drones, collapse and conflict. The Russians, though, do appear rattled, warning of a massive increase in strikes in Ukraine and overnight five suicide drones launched towards this city. We could hear anti-aircraft fire and there were at least three explosions, one hitting here. This is an accommodation block for students. Luckily no one was here at the time. But guys, it really appears that we're now in a new phase of this war, not just a battle on the land here inside Ukraine, but also an escalating aerial conflict that's now hitting into the heart of Russia. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time. 
as we read in Revelation 6, 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Finally tonight, the month of August will be a delight for night sky watchers. The month will bring us not one, but two super moons. The first known as the Sturgeon Moon will light up the sky on Tuesday night and will appear 16% brighter than an average moon. The second will take place on the night of August 30th and will be a rare blue moon. A blue moon takes place only about once every three years. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Deserted streets and telltale signs of Monday's violence in the northern Indian state of Haryana. Tensions escalated in the new district when a religious procession by a right-wing Hindu group was stopped from passing through a Muslim-majority area. During the standoff, houses, shops, vehicles, police vans and even ambulances were touched. Several people were killed and injured, police officers among them. A curfew is in place to prevent further unrest. Internet services have been suspended and schools and colleges are closed. The state government says the violence was engineered. The violence wasn't spontaneous. There is a conspiracy behind this. There were stones, weapons, bullets found. It seems there is a mastermind behind this. Someone engineered it. We will conduct a detailed investigation and take strict actions against the people involved in this. Within hours, the unrest had spread to neighboring districts. On Monday night, an imam was killed and a mosque was set ablaze in a suburb of New Delhi known as a corporate hub. Thousands of police and paramilitary forces have been deployed to maintain order and public gatherings have been restricted in areas surrounding Nu. Hundreds of families have fled. The Haryana Home Minister says the situation is under control, but for residents of New District, the sense of unease remains. Protests turned violent as supporters of Usman Sonko set fires in the street and hurled petrol bombs at police. The unrest came after the Senegalese opposition figure was newly indicted on charges that included undermining state security, fomenting insurrection and disseminating false news. Adding to protesters' anger, authorities also cut off internet access because of what they said were hateful and subversive messages on social media. We demand Sanko's immediate release and that the authorities restore the internet. We expect him to be released and to make a statement calling for an end to the demonstrations. Sanko was arrested at his home on Friday and over the weekend he called on his supporters to stand up and resist oppression, revealing that he had begun a hunger strike. On Monday, the interior minister announced that Sonko's political party, the Patriots of Senegal, would be dissolved for having frequently called for insurrection. A deputy of the party told France 24 that it was a blatant effort to keep Sonko from challenging President Macky Sall in next year's election. We have been raising the alarm about this both on a national and international level, that Macky Sall's only goal is to eliminate anyone who opposes him. And of course he's trying to do this with his biggest challenger, Usman Sanko, with a series of false accusations. In a phone call with France 24, a spokesman for President Sall's ruling party vehemently denied the move was politically motivated. There are fears the security situation in Senegal could further deteriorate. After Sonko was sentenced in absentia in an unrelated case last month, violence in the streets left at least 16 people dead. Almost one week after coup leaders seized power in Niger, France prepares to evacuate French and European nationals in the West African country. Considering the situation in Niamey, the violence against our embassy on the weekend, 
and the fact that the airspace is closed and our citizens cannot leave by their own means, France is preparing the evacuation of its citizens and other European citizens who wish to leave the country. The decision comes after violence over the weekend that targeted the French embassy in Niger's capital. The country's democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum, remains in house arrest by members of his own guard since the coup last Wednesday, the seventh military takeover in less than three years in West and Central Africa. The military governments of Mali and Burkina Faso, who have each undergone two coups since 2020, have backed the move, saying that any intervention against Niger will be met with a response. The transitional government of Burkina Faso and Mali expressed their solidarity to the brother country of Niger, who have, in full responsibility, decided to take their destiny into their own hands and to assume its sovereignty before history. But the coup leaders face mounting international pressure, including from the EU, US and West African nations, to reinstate Bazoum as president. On Monday, the junta accused France of plotting an intervention to extract Bazoum, allegations that France has denied. Hospitals were overwhelmed in northwest Pakistan on Sunday following a blast at a political rally. At least 44 people are known to have died and nearly 200 people were wounded, including children. The attack was aimed at supporters of a hardline cleric and political leader in the country's Bajor district that borders Afghanistan. No one has claimed responsibility, but local officials say it was meant to weaken Pakistani Islamists. Six people were killed and seven injured in Lebanon's largest Palestinian refugee camp after clashes erupted early on Sunday. According to anonymous Palestinian officials, the fighting broke out after an unknown gunman tried to assassinate Islamist militant Mahmoud Khalil, killing a companion of his instead. Later, Islamist militants assassinated a Palestinian military general from the Fatah group and three escorts. The clashes stopped for several hours in the morning, though state media said there was still sporadic sniper fire. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, 
for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his Father's house, where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1-3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ could come this month, or he might come next week, or he could even come... The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.